friends, Joe Edelman here. And after years of development, I'd like to introduce you to Green Waves. Green Waves is an expressive and feature-packed synthesizer, MIDI, and CV controller inspired by the legendary Owned Martineau, a rare electronic instrument from 1920s France. Radiohead guitarist Johnny Greenwood has famously used an Owned Martineau in both the band's work and his own solo projects and film scores. Since hearing this instrument many years ago, I quickly became obsessed with it for its hauntingly beautiful tones and voice-like expression capabilities. While today there are a small number of boutique makers of owned replicas around the world, the instrument is not nearly as accessible as it ought to be. My goal was to bring its classic sound and controls, along with some new options, together in one simple and cost-effective interface. It has truly been a labor of love, and I'm so excited to give you a tour of the instrument. At its core, the Green Waves uses a ring on a string to control pitch. When you start up the instrument, it prompts you to move the ring to the lowest C note and press the touche, or volume intensity key. This calibrates its zero position to tune the scale length of the fingerboard. Once it is started up, the rectangular touche key is what you use in the left hand to control the volume of the sound. You can press very gently and gradually to swell in notes or tap it quickly for staccato bursts. The right hand controls the pitch of the sound. By placing your right index finger in the ring and sliding left and right, you can make the pitch get lower or higher, respectively. There are indentations on the fingerboard for all of the white keys on a piano, and little metal studs for the black notes or sharps. I've also designed the fingerboard to loosely resemble a piano keyboard for added visual reference. When you've placed your finger on a note, you can also add a slower, fast vibrato by anchoring your finger down and wiggling the ring quickly back and forth. The continuous nature of the pitch control means that you can access an extremely fine resolution of microtones between standard notes and perform wide sweeping glissandos or other sound effects. Looking at the control section, you can see that there are four sliders and four knobs, as well as a small OLED display. The OLED shows you the shape of the wave you're currently creating. By moving the four sliders, you can mix between a variety of different wave shapes. These are the owned, or a sine wave, the gomb, a squarish wave, the crew, a peak-limited triangle wave, and the octaviant, a partially rectified or folded sine wave with an emphasis on the first harmonic. The gomb wave also has two extra control parameters, a low-pass filter with cutoff frequency control, and a pulse width control to make it narrower or wider. Blending these four sliders together, you can achieve whatever tonality you want, from dark to bright, nasal to hollow, and so on. As you move the sliders, the OLED display updates and shows you your new creation. Another set of performance controls are the LED buttons surrounding the touche. These ones to the top left are octave shift buttons, allowing you four different octave ranges for the fingerboard, with a total span of C1 to C8. These ones to the bottom right are the momentary transpose buttons found on the original owned. Each has a different interval in terms of quarter and semitones that the pitch will jump up or down when pressed. You have up a quarter tone, down a quarter tone, up a semitone, up a whole tone, up a major third, and up a perfect fifth. And these can be combined in any permutation. In addition to the wave shape controls, there's also a reverb knob that adds a stereo spring reverb effect to the sound. This loosely replicates the sound of the own's original resonance speaker.
You can fine tune the decay length and brightness of the reverb by holding either transpose two or three respectively and turning the reverb knob without pressing the touche. Finally, there is a master volume control which affects the maximum volume of a full press on the touche. Everything I've shown you so far pertains to mode one, or what I call classic mode. In this mode, the sound is monophonic, meaning only one note voice is sounded at a time. By flipping this switch, you enter mode two, which is a key intelligent harmonizer. This copies whatever mix of wave shapes that you have active to four separate voices tuned to the root, third, fifth, and octave. By default, it's configured to a C major scale, but you can easily reconfigure this using the calibration button. You can also choose to reassign the voices to different intervals. When in harmony mode, the previous two controls for the gomb waves, filter cutoff, and pulse width become controls for the amount of pan spread in the voices and the master harmony interval, respectively. By default, the four voices in harmony mode are spread out between the left and right channels. You can narrow them back down to mono by decreasing the pan knob. You can also individually pan each voice to a different location in the stereo field by holding down the octave plus button and moving that voice's slider. The master harmony interval knob in its default center position corresponds to a diatonic mode, which means, for example, that third harmonies will alternate major and minor according to the selected key. However, you can turn this knob fully counterclockwise to force a minor or diminished interval and fully clockwise to force major or perfect intervals. Another cool trick is that you can assign the voices to unison and use the octave down button plus the master interval knob to change the amount of detune for a thick synthesizer voice or for cool Johnny Greenwood-esque note cluster effects. Any wave that you've designed or harmony scheme that you've set up can be saved for later recall as a preset. There are six preset slots available. To access them, press and hold transpose one without pressing the touche for a few seconds. The screen will show the six available slots and whether each is full or empty. To write to a slot, tap that corresponding transpose button twice. To load an existing preset, tap it once. To clear a preset slot, press and hold the corresponding button for a few seconds. To exit the menu without saving any changes, tap the touche. So far, we've only talked about that very signature of owned control schemes, which is the continuous ribbon control. But the original own Martineau, and in fact many of its emulations, do also feature ways to control pitch in discrete steps with a standard Western chromatic piano keyboard. I've included a MIDI in port, which allows you to connect any standard 6-pin MIDI-capable keyboard, and using the key-slash-ring switch, 
you can access keyboard mode. Currently, while the instrument is in keyboard mode, the touche is no longer active for volume, and instead, pressing a key on the keyboard will initiate a standard volume envelope. The original Own Martineau also featured a spring-loaded vibrato action to its keyboard, and while that remains a goal for future development, I've made the ring control remain active in this mode to be able to impart vibrato to the sound with the left hand. While the Green Waves is a perfectly fine standalone synthesizer instrument with lots of sonic flexibility, it can also be used as a controller for other synths using both MIDI and CV connections. To control a MIDI capable synth, you can use the MIDI out port on the Green Waves connected to the MIDI in on the receiving synth. The Green Waves MIDI control makes use of standard note on and pitch bend messages to simulate smooth pitch glides. As such, you'll need to match the receiving synth's pitch bend interval setting to the Green Waves, and there is more on how to do this in the manual. There are also three eighth-inch jacks on the rear panel of the Green Waves that can send control voltage signals to receiving analog or modular synth gear. These three signals are the V, or volume control, which corresponds to pressure on the touche, P, or pitch control, which comes from the position of the ring, and G, which is a gate signal that can be set to go to high or low voltage, in other words, V or S-trig, when the touche is being pressed. Each of these signals will vary from zero to positive five volts at maximum, and the pitch control is done in a volts per octave standard. Hopefully this brief demonstration has given you a glimpse into what Green Waves is capable of. Stay tuned for more demos and information on how you can pre-order yours.